did this chair come from now? Yo, welcome to Vice Grip Garage. Today I'm going to be reviewing the top 25 vehicles in the factory category of the International Quarantine Car Show selected by you fellers. And then I'm going to grab one and shoot them on down the line for a shot at the Mega Boss title and a thousand dollar gift card to Summit Racing. That's way too much. That's perfect. But first, I want to thank Rich and Aaron over at DeBoss Garage for trusting me that I wouldn't screw this up. And let's be honest, there's a lot of brain thinking going on here. So the probability, you know, she's, it's up there. And thirdly, I want to thank you if you participated in the car show or picked up some merchandise. Together we've raised nearly $8,000 for Doctors Without Borders, and that's fantastic. And it's not too late, you can shoot over on the line to the Boss Garage and pick yourself up some. We've got a goal of 10,000 USD, and I think we can get there with your help. So let's go ahead and get started by looking at the top 25 that you guys chose. <laughs> So as you can see, I got my hands just, you know, they're full making this decision. And I've lost more sleep than the week before Terminator 2 came out. Some of these vehicles are just, they're nice. They got the shine dripping off of them and they scare me, to be honest. I just, how do you even drive them, you know? And I'm starting to think that maybe some of you, you know, haven't seen my channel before. So I thought it would be helpful if I give you a couple examples of what I'm looking for in the factory category and some of the factory options that, you know, I'm pretty fond of. Factory windshield and wiper. That's neat. Completely normal. This mirror, it's fine. Cools the brakes off. Seems fine. This will increase the down pressure in the back here. I see nothing wrong with that. Yep, that's fine. You need them. Well, hopefully that helps make sense of things for a guy. I don't know. I mean, what do you want me to say at this juncture? Now oh, there's 10 of you here that put your rig into all 87 categories for some reason. And I mean, if you don't know what you got there, feller, I'm not quite sure how to judge on it, you know? And there's a lot of nice rigs in there and it's, this is a hard decision, but don't make me feel bad because literally all of you got way more votes in other categories. so. I'm gonna snip you out of the factory one and we'll thin the herd up here a little bit. So let's say goodbye to these 10. All right, so how we're gonna do this, I think, is we're gonna look at the 10 runner-ups. Where is that? Is that only second? I don't know. There's a group of 10. We're gonna do that and then there's another, There's a, the remainder of the five after the 10. Just hang in there and let's go through these 10 now. 1995 Chevy S10. She's a fur by fur. You know, I can get around there in the trees and I got really excited when I saw the first picture of this thing. And then he fixed on it, you know. But it's Kubota orange and she's straight piped. Plus it's got Subaru seats in there. So he's using some factory parts and I gotta appreciate that. So he made the top 15. 1953 Ford pick'em up truck. This thing is snazzy. I mean, it's a going to town unit. Tons of metal work on this thing. Really nice looking paint. Did a good job on the engine even. My uncle had one of these and then, you know, he traded it for a Dodge Caravan. Idiot. But again, this is just, it's too nice of a truck to go down a gravel road or haul salt licks in. 
you know, but good job on the rig. My goodness. Onto a 1947 Fiergo power wagon, and this thing looks right up my alley. He put about as much effort into his submission as I did high school. I only got one pitcher here. But he did get bonus points for the canoe and the crescent wrench on the fender well there. But that's a pretty good rig. You're going to have to keep me updated what she looks like when you're done there. 1966 Chevy C10. Not only does this truck look better than the new Chevy, but she's got a lot of history on her. Guy's uncle bought this in 1970 and it's been around to 39 states and Canada. Plus, look at this topper. I mean, this thing is looking sharp. Moving on to an 05 Ford Exploder XLT. Look at the bumper on this thing. You could do some pretty good bumper tickles in Walmart with that thing. Served Ottawa police and now it's a daily driver. Guy's a volunteer firefighter and a security officer. And I like that and I appreciate what you do there, guy. This Camaro is cleaner than a doctor's hands. I mean, how do you get into the thing? You just kind of bow and Luke right into that thing. It's a nice ride there, guy, but it's just, it's too shiny for me. I get, I'm getting the anxieties right now. She's all factory, original options in her, but man, that's a nice looking car there, guy. 1959 Studebaker. Did you look at this thing yet? Look at it. It's just, there's just something about it that says, hey, I'm here and I'm doing the thing. She's got a flat six in there and a bolt action. Probably gets about 97 miles to the gallon. I don't know. It's up there, I'm sure. But I like that the guy just found this in a field and took a gamble on her, because that's exactly what I do. Well, pretty much every day. Got his kids involved cleaning her up, and they're driving it around to shows and whatnot. So good on you, guy. This is a nice looking rig. It hurts me right in the front brain, but I just, I got to cut you out. 1994 Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor. Look at that red, just shine your eyeballs out. This thing is a good looking unit. Look at that diamond plate center console. I'll be dipped. That really put her over the top. You got an ax in the trunk. What else do you need here? Plus, who doesn't want to own a police interceptor? I like this thing. 1976 Chevy C10. And it's a spirit of 76 here now, fellers. This rig right here, if I had to just drive one home, I think it would be this little cream puff here. Lots of history in this thing. Been in the family a long time. And the feller here saying she's got the Scottsdale and Bonanza and then they threw on the spirit of 76. That makes her really rare, actually. And it's in good shape, one of them there survivors. Look at this seat, though. I mean... I wouldn't even cover that up, I don't think. It's a nice looking truck there. I'm pretty interested to see what you do with this thing. Hopefully you can shine her up just a little, not too much, just, you know, put a little bit of shine on her and then just enjoy it. 1985 Pontiac Fiero. I'm fond of these little buggers. I actually have one. Allegedly, they jump approaches at 90 really well. The weight is just dispersed evenly. I was getting used to watching drunken cell phone videos on the submissions here and then Randy's video popped in and kind of just sat there like, I mean, this guy can, he put together a nice presentation there, feller. Good job. He's done a ton of work to this thing. Most people would walk by a Fiero and go, eh, ain't worth it, but he's, he's going after it. Great job. Looking forward to seeing this thing painted. He's probably painting it right now. Send those pictures over to me. I do want to see this thing when you're done. Got my slippers on backwards. We're down to our top five now. And this is just when it got really hard on a guy. I was laying in the kitchen in the fetal position. I mean, that had nothing to do with this video. I was just giving you an update. But anyway, in the number five spot is a 1932 Auburn. This thing is really, really cool. This car is super nice. I just could not look past the amount of effort this feller's put in. I mean, way more than Wesley Snipes paying taxes. He basically fabricated this entire car. He started with a couple pieces and made her happen. And then there was the video of him driving around in his yard just on the frame. 
you know, that brought me down to my knee, basically. This was one of those designs that emerged that didn't look like a horse carriage for the first time ever. Kind of had a really futuristic design back then, but man, they nailed it. She's a really long lasting vintage look. You're not gonna miss this thing coming down the road. Great job on this build guy. Can't wait to see this thing done done. I mean, I'd probably just drive her in primer, but I think it's just too classy for that. You know, you're gonna have to put some shine on this thing is what I'm saying. Number four is a beautiful machine. Hook your peepers on this 1985 Ford F-250 and she's got the extendo cab. And I'm positive she runs like a scolded pigeon. Just look at this thing. I'm not sure if that cab mount is blowing out or she's just got the flexo light frame. Helps on the MPGs down the road. And don't worry about them hood latches. You don't always need those. I'd be disappointed if the center console wasn't self-tapped to the tranny hump, but I'm pretty sure it is. I'm just gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. She's got a fuseless 460 barking in there. You know, them pump out about 107 horsepower on Thursdays. I like his fill filter mod. Those particular kind have been known to cause more fires than jealous ex-girlfriends. So what you want to do is hang them right over your exhaust manifold, especially when there's clear evidence of it leaking severely. You got to be careful not to get carried away here though, guy. You got a custom alternator bracket out of a 99 Explorer in there and just, I don't want you to get carried away and ruin this truck. Just, you got to let her be a little bit. So. You, you know, just heed my warning and just slow her up some. Here's your top three. In third place, I feel like there should be welding sparks and potato guns going off, but I just, I don't have the budget. In third place is a 1980 Chevy Monza Spider. So this 16 year old grabs all these parts that his dad has laying around the garage, throws them into a spare car sitting around there and literally builds himself a spider. And this thing has a V8 now. They swapped out the four banger. They put a roll cage in this thing. They've got it stripped down to nothing right now, getting ready to paint it. I think they just jammed it actually. You know, I've actually got a Monza too, and I can tell you that these cars are not easy to work on. And, well, mine's, you know, it's a lot nicer. <laughs> No, no, it's not even close to as nice as theirs. The father-son story that these guys have going on is really amazing, and I urge you to follow it. It's one of the things that I want to shine the old light on with my channel, too, is we got to get these kids and the younger generations involved, or this whole hot rod and car scene, she's going to be gone before two blinks of the eyeball. This was a really tough decision for me, but I know that you guys aren't done yet and you've got some big plans for the thing. And I'm really excited to see this thing painted up and it's gonna look really good. Looking forward to seeing you guys on Power Tour. I'd need a water canteen to look at number two because I'd be walking around it that long. It's a 1983 Nissan 720 King Cab four wheel drive. What does 720 even mean? I don't even know and I don't care. Just look at this thing. This is the most majestic four-wheel drive rig I've seen in a long time, and I've seen some rigs. I know the wheels don't match, but she's got one factory one on the front, and I'm thinking it has something to do with ergonomics with the back wheels there. I'm not quite sure yet. Here's what I like about this. A 14-year-old kid bought this truck, and he's been working on it the whole time with his dad. They took the engine out, rebuilt the engine, and they're just getting by. You know, they're hooking old straps to the ceiling to pull the engine out and all sorts of stuff. I just, I'm really liking this. Plus, look at these floor patches. I mean, that's definitely factory. I'm not sure if he's planning on putting a box on this thing. I mean, technically, he's already got a box floor. She's just a little weight reduced on the sides, but one thing the guy wrote in the about section here is neither one of them knew anything about cars so they've just been learning as they go and subsequently helped them grow closer as a family and you really got a like on that and i'm sure you guys are building memories you're never going to forget so keep it up 
excited to see how this thing turns out. You're doing a heck of a job so far. Congratulations on second place there, guy. I'm so excited. Deedle, 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 deedle. Yeah, I don't think that's the baseline. My number one pick, winner of a Summit Racing Jacket and a shot at the Mega Boss Award, is a 1968 Chevrolet C10. There's quite a few reasons why I chose this old rig, but it's mainly because this is exactly what my channel is about. Finding an old, forgotten, abandoned rig, usually stuffed in a barn or shed or lean-to, just like this truck. Dragging it home, making it run and drive again. And honestly, just saving it from the crusher or rotting into the ground. This old girl's still running points. She's got the two-barrel carburetor in her and even got the Rams manifold on this old thing. Look at this three-quarter inch plywood digital disc reader cold snack holder unit here in the center console. These are rare. I'm pretty sure they were only offered from 68 to 70, but I could be wrong. And these boom booms down here by the feet, that was definitely custom installed, but they blend right in. You can hardly tell they're there. The footprint gas pedal, you don't need to remove the other one. Just lay it over top of the factory unit there. And it just you know, gives you a wider foot path in case you're in the flip-flops mode. The boat tank in the bed here is all too familiar. I mean, if I'm being honest with you, about 98.7% of my rigs run some sort of boat tank or gas jug. And he was gonna change on it, but you know, he learned that they work just fine. Leave them be, and he is. Looks like he added in some NHRA gauges in here. I mean, that's at least 27 horsepower, depending on the wind and barometric pressure, of course. But don't worry about the fuel gauge that doesn't work. You don't really need those. Congratulations, Mr. Chevrolet. You somehow found a rag that is the exact definition of Vice Grip Garage and the Factory Award. And to be honest, I'm about level 13.1 jealous. Great. But wait, there's more. If you were the guy that plays second, fifth, fourth, or third, I got something for you too. You're gonna get a $50 coupon to vicegripgarage.com. $50? I just don't believe it. Well, I guess I got to him. Looking right at it. But anyway, get a hold of me at vicegripgarage at gmail.com and I'll go on ahead and hook you up with that. Please be sure to tune in to watch the judging of the other categories. And I'll put a link to those channels down below there in the description. Zip ties and bias plies, regular car reviews, Sarah and Tuned, The Skid Factory, and Bad Obsession Motorsport. Thanks again for everybody that participated in this. This was a lot of fun and honestly, all 25 year rigs should be sitting in my backyard right now. No, I just, I ain't got the room. But I mean, if you wanna sell them, let me know, I guess. No, I can't, I just can't do that.